All right. Anybody know what an inverse function is? Maybe heard of it before? Of course not. None of you are as dorky as I am. What do you think? Anybody have a, an idea what the inverse is? Negative 1. Okay, fair enough. Some people see this notation. That is one of the notations for an inverse, yeah. Um, the easiest way to think of what an inverse is, maybe it's not the most rigorous definition, but it's the function backwards. It sort of undoes what a function changes. So let me take the abstract and, and fin fix that for you. It's like taking a present, wrapping it is a function, unwrapping it is the inverse. You end up back with the item. So like, if I'm going to say, like, hey, Julius, I've got an Xbox for you. There's an Xbox. The function wraps it. I give it to Julius. He unwraps it. It's now an Xbox again. It's no longer a shiny box with paper on it, right? So whether that means I'm multiplying by 2 and adding 1, to undo that, I'd subtract 1 and divide by 2, right? I, you go backwards from where you started. So um, that's where we're going to let's uh, call that our inverse for today. And I'm going to put this in quotes. And we'll use a really lame example. What do you think the inverse of x plus 1 is? Well, someone said it. Just didn't see who it was. Yeah. If x plus 1 is your function and you want to undo that, what you did was add 1. So to undo it, you'd subtract 1. Okay, we'll be more precise about it here. Uh, when you're solving algebraically for an inverse, the steps are pretty simple. Not always simple to find, but uh, fortunately for us, we're limited to very specific, simple cases. So the steps are to switch x and y. And solve for y. All right. So first example is a line graph. So y equals 2x plus 4. So if I wanted to show you what the inverse is, step 1 says switch them. And step 2 is to solve that for y. So that is the inverse of um, the original graph. 2x plus 4, the inverse is x minus 4 over 2. And I'm going to illustrate something that's important that you guys need to know as well. You have to see there is a pattern here that's, that's important in transformations. So if you had a table of values, I'm going to build some of these things up. I'm going to put in, just to remind you guys, here is the function. It's 2x plus 4. So if I put in x equals 0, I'm going to have y equals 4. If I put in x equals 1, I'm going to have y equals 6. Okay. Now let's see what happens if we're on the function, uh, sorry, the inverse, which is x minus 4 over 2. So if I start with 4, 4 minus 4 is 0, divided by 2 is 0. And then I'll do 6. 6 minus 4 is 2. Divided by 2 is 1. So here's why I picked those on purpose. Does anybody notice anything about those two tables? They're flipped. Yeah, they're backwards. So where this one was x, this one, and y, they've been switched here. This was the table for y. This was the table for x. So that's one of the things that we're going to take a look at on the graph. If you want to find from the function to its inverse, every point has had the x and y value switched, just like in this table. Okay. So how much harder can it get? Well, luckily, it's, we're going to stop at quadratics. Okay. So x squared minus 4, can we, uh, you try it. What is the algebraic equation for its inverse? And then see if you can fill in that table and confirm what I've been saying about um, them being x and y switched.
Okay, so here is my algebraic equation. It is the square root of x plus 4. Good on you if you had plus and minus in there as well. Um, the table of values, if I plug them in for the function, I get 2, 0, and 1, negative 3. If I also try plugging them into the inverse, it works backwards. So actually, I want to show you um, a picture of this one. Actually, we might as well look at a picture of both, but... The original one was y equals 2x plus 4. Its inverse was x minus 4 over 2. Okay, so there's the function in its inverse. For example, at this point, it's 0, 4. Over here, it's 4, 0. Everybody's been flipped around. Okay, now I'm going to show you the parabola because the parabola looks kind of interesting. Oops. It's minus 4, right? Okay. And then, um, what did we say here? y equals square root of x plus 4. And I also need to have the bottom one. There's no magic plus or minus button. But uh, there's the one when all the points in x and y are switched as well. So you kind of expect to see the same shape, right? Because you didn't distort the shape of it you flipped all the points so they kind of show up in the same place but you know it's it's just sort of crooked in our point of view here so if this one's the function this sort of sideways parabola or sorry the inverse is that a function no it doesn't it doesn't pass the vertical line test right you hit two points along the way when you go vertically so how could we make this um, we do this thing and we're gonna do this in calculus when we get there um, we call it restricting the domain for example, the reason why I end up with, see these points? If I pick positive for y's, that means I'm going to have positive x's when I flip them, right? So if I wanted to show you just one of the branches, let me show you a picture and then we can talk about how it works. Um, oops. Sorry, bear with me here. I swear minus 4 and... Okay, so there's one half of the parabola, right? Now, this time, if I want to show you the um, inverse, those ones are the inverses of each other, and those are just pieces of the graph, right? Like here it's negative 4, 0. Here it's uh, 0, negative 4. So those pieces correspond with each other, and both of them are functions. They both pass the vertical line test. But the only way I can get there is if I start by restricting the domain. So it may be hard for you to see, but what this, this nonsense after it means is x is greater than 0. So basically by doing that, by stopping it, I've been able to keep it so that there won't be um, more than one spot vertically when I find its inverse. Now don't worry, there's a simple way to figure this out. Um, but that's what we're going to say here. If x is greater than 0, then the inverse is also a function. Okay. So what do you think uh, happens? We were just talking about vertical line graphs, right? So here's a vertical line. x equals 3. What'll, what do you think will happen to the inverse of that line? What do you think the inverse is going to look like? Any ideas? Right now I got this vertical line, x equals 3. Yeah, Steve. Yeah, horizontal. Because why? Why are you guys saying that? Anybody have a good reason other than intuition? Yeah, one, one, one huge fact you got to know at this point, x and y are switched. So that's going to now become y equals 3. That's what its inverse would look like. x and y get switched. So x equals 3 becomes y equals 3. So the reason I'm telling you this is now we can figure out if this is a um, vertical line would become a horizontal line. We can use a horizontal line to figure out if it'll pass the vertical line test for an inverse. So take a look. y equals x squared minus 4. Does that pass a horizontal line test? Exactly the same as you know for a vertical line test, but it goes horizontally. Does that pass anywhere? 
there's all kinds of problems because, for example, if I put like y equals 2, bam, it hits two spots. It hits right here and it hits right here. So it's not working out. Um, but what I can do is I can say, how can we make this so it passes the vertical line test? That's how I knew that if I went and said, oh, well, let's just take half of it. Does that pass the vertical line test? Or sorry, horizontal line test now? So, so by chopping it off, and I know that it passes a horizontal line test, when I take the inverse, it's going to pass the vertical line test. So that's the easy way to know how am I supposed to restrict it, make it pass the horizontal line test. Okay, so we'll put that underneath here. Okay, so I did want to just do a quick recap. If x, y is on the graph, what point are you going to find on the inverse? Y, x. Yeah, it goes backwards. Okay. Here are the notations that you will uh, run into. These are notations for the inverse. And be careful. This is a common mistake that students make. Don't, don't interpret that as an exponent. With functions, that means something very different. Okay, that means the inverse. A hundred percent of the time, it will mean inverse, not not this upside down like your calculator button has the reciprocal. Okay, so a hundred percent of the time, it'll never be a time when it's not that way. Um, but here's the other interesting thing: when we flip all those points, you might not have noticed it, but there's actually a mirror in here. So let me put up the original ones that we had. We had two x. What was it? Two x plus four. Two x plus 4, and y equals x minus 4 divided by 2. Anybody see a mirror there? Some people are really good spatially, and they can see the mirror. It's not a straight mirror. Yeah, it's on a tilt. So if you can't see it, I'm going to draw it here. It's, this is the line. It's mirror imaged through there, y equals x. So when we flip x and y, that makes a mirror along y equals x. So let me show you that parabola again. If I go y equals um, x squared minus 4, and I do it from 0 on, and I'm going to put out the line y equals x, and I'm going to put out its inverse. Oops, sorry. That's not its inverse. <laughs> should have been plus 4. There. Again, the inverse graph, it's a mirror, right? So the change this time is it's like a reflection. And this used to be taught in Math 12 with your reflections unit because it was real nice and simple. x, y, and then the line y equals x. I'm not sure why they changed it, but they did. So this is um, for an inverse. We're going to just record that we also will see it a reflection, oops, reflecting the line about the line y equals x. So visually, if you're good that way, some of you will be able to do inverses a little quicker. If not, the only time that that's really uh, super handy, if you see a bunch of graphs and you're trying to pick out which one is the inverse, that's the pattern you're looking for, is the mirror along y equals x. All right. So let's actually make an inverse graph here. Now, this is so, it's so nice and clean. It's so nice and simple. There's not even any math, really. We could probably teach this, could probably move this to like grade three's curriculum. Because what's the only thing I'm going to do to these points? Switch x and y. Just turn them around. So to start with here, just to make sure we're on the right track, this is at negative three, and I'm down three. So switch them, and we get what kind of point? What kind of point is that? Invariant. Yeah, invariant. It's not going to move. It stays where it is. Good stuff. OK. Then I go to negative 3, positive 1. So it's going to be reflected over to 1 and negative 3. OK. And let's see here. So if I go quickly, maybe you can race me. I'm sure you'll be quicker. 
Where are we here? Five, five, okay. So now I've plotted all the points of the inverse graph. So to draw it, sometimes it's helpful for people, you know, because it's sort of funny to connect these dots, it is helpful to kind of just put a little dashed line in your work to remind yourself that you want to see a reflection. If you've done this right, it should reflect, like bounce off of a mirror on that line. So here's what it would look like. So the blue graph is the inverse graph, and it is a mirror of the black graph that it started with. Okay. Um, horizontal line test. Did you, is this, could you have predicted that this wouldn't be a function? Does, where would it fail the horizontal line test? Sorry? Yeah, it has a bunch of hor horizontal lines itself. So it would fail the test right here. It would fail it right here. And those correspond with this and this, which fail the vertical line test. So we would have known by looking at it, if all I asked you was, will the inverse be a function, you should know that it wouldn't be because it fails the horizontal line test. OK. So here you go. Last one. Give it a shot. See what you come up with. Okay, so there's the reflection, and there are the points all flipped. So uh, blue graph should be the one you end up with.